Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to take a look at the Aorus 4090 Extreme. Uh, there's a lot of folks that think they're going to get a much better experience in cooling with the AIO version of a 4090 than they would with a lot of the bulkier coolers. Um, and I've said some pretty not so great things about the Extreme series, uh, the AIO ones at least since 3090 Ti's. So I'm going to get into that today by taking this one apart. But I also want to specify that in this video, I'm going to compare this card in terms of cooling and noise versus the Strix cooler, okay, 4090, uh, in terms of cooling and noise. Um, so I'm going to put them both at a 500 plus watt load because they both have a 600 watt BIOS, right? And you'll get an idea of what the actual differences are, okay? And what you get when you buy a GPU on air and you buy one on, on an AIO. Now, obviously, this brings into question the Supreme AIO, uh, the 240. I'm gonna tell you right now, 240 is not sufficient. Um, unless you're in the 350, 400 watts all the time, I guess that's somewhat normal, but if you're trying to push the most out of it, I don't think the 240 is better than the air-cooled even, to be honest, um, if you have a really good air cooler. Uh, I actually do have the Supreme 240. Um, I've blocked it already, but you know it is what it is. So back to this card. Um, this is all you get in the box along with that Aorus Chibi, um, so I'm not going to go into the unboxing. Um, it has an RGB strip here. Uh, this does light up, I believe. Um, I didn't really play with the RGB much um, because RGB fusion for Aorus never works. Um, it's very plasticky. Uh, this is all plastic, okay? And the back plate is metal. Um, I don't believe this lights up. So you can see I have not taken it apart yet. I want to note that I did all these tests um, on the stock stock pad, stock paste. So I used this one, as you can see. This one has been never taken apart. Okay, it's a fairly new Strix. All right. Um, so everything's fair and fair. So you get three fans <coughs> with the quote-unquote shark fin design, which is bullshit, and uh, they're fairly. They're not the world's best quality feeling fans, nor are they the most quiet fans. Um, but even with the kingpins, you know, you never got a really good quality fan on these. I can't think of any AIO GPU that came with extremely good fans. I'll say maybe the Kudan for the 2080 Ti, um, but that's like hard to get and rare. Um, this, I guess, is their fill port, but this, I assume, is a generic Acetec or something like that of a design. It is a slim rad, all right? Um, since I tested these already, I will let you know that this end actually gets pretty warm. It's about to be 44C under load at 500 something watts. Um, so just to let you know, the radiator tip does get pretty hot. The radiator itself doesn't feel heat soaking though, but it does get pretty warm. So uh, just from the screws here, I can tell this is the same design as from the 3090 Ti. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put a towel down so get some contrast. I'm gonna take this apart. And if you guys have watched my videos on the 3090 Ti LC Strix, um, I'll put a link down to it. You'll see how the VRM cooling looks and you'll see the VRM cooling on here. Okay, so give me a second and we come back with a screwdriver. So I'm doing this from a slightly weird angle. So you're gonna have to excuse me if it looks like I'm missing a screw. Um, so I'm gonna start just by taking out the back plate. So I don't believe there's a water block for this. Um, so I think the PCB is a little different than the uh, 360, uh, sorry, the gaming OC and the master have the same PCB. I believe this one is a little different. Frankly, I no longer have the gaming OC and I've never purchased a 4090 master. Um, well, I did purchase it, but I never got around to using it. Um, and then I, I gave it to someone else because um, they needed it for some stupid orange thing. But, okay, so let's pop all the screws. Okay, so it looks like most of these screws are the same. And I, I know you could, there's a guy, um, Mod Cafe. He's actually on a, on a lathe made like brass inserts that you can convert this to G14 for your loop and use the pump on here. Um, so, you know, look for his channel and contact him if that kind of interests you. Now, once again, this warranty void doesn't matter. It doesn't actually void your warranty in the United States. And um, 
I haven't taken this thing apart in ages. So you're gonna have to give me a moment so I figure this out. Okay, so it seems like the, oh, okay, that's it. And that's it. All right, so you'll notice it's all connected by one connector, so I'm gonna pop that. All right, okay, so that's a little bit tighter than expected. Okay, all right guys, it's actually coming up out of, out of the board. So the connector is actually coming off. Um, so let me see if I can just kind of go around it. Because right now, pulling on this is taking the connector off the board, not just the plug. Lovely. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this on camera. It's kind of hard to see. But as I'm pulling this, it's actually coming, the connector is coming off the pins. So I'm not, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm just going to keep that there. Um, okay, so pace looks good. Uh, you can see that on the PCB you have uh, a full PCB. Nothing's missing. All right, so we can actually count that. So these four would be for the VRAM. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So 24 phase plus four. Um, I have to look into exactly what they are, but you can see that there's obviously headers for something else. And there's other things that we would be missing. You can see all the empty pins here. Um, but I guess they will reuse this PCB later on. All right, so trying not to remove this part. If I can, you can see right here, Okay, I'm trying to figure out how this is screwed in because I don't remember. Um, I believe this this comes off with the removal of these. Let's find out. There should be one more under here. And probably some under those other thermal pads. Um, but you can see right away compared to the Strix, this is uh, this cold plate is a lot less in terms of sizing than the others. All right, so. Not that I really need to put that back. I'm betting there's a screw down here. Yep, there's screws down here. So what I'll do is let me pause this. Let me take this out so you guys can I'm try to get, remove that pin at the same time so we can get a better look. So we're back. Um, you can see it's actually just eight screw, four screws that hold the uh, primary thing down. And uh, this is all plastic. Okay, kind of disappointing, right? Um, but this is it. This is it. This is, you get the pump on one kind of um, cold plate design here. You can see that these, these are just attachments, right? They're not directly connected. See, they're just attachments on the sides. So if I were to take this pump off, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a screw right under these pads. Is there? Yeah, nope. I, so actually technically I can't just remove this. Yeah, it's already wiggling. So if I were to take this pump off, I can just remove the, the phases and the phase coolers pretty much right off. So you can see this is pretty flimsy in terms of what you're getting as a copper cold plate. The others are much more bigger and you know, like even the Supreme, I, dang it, I don't have the cooler anymore, but the Supreme AIO and the Strix AIOs, you get this whole beefy heat sink on top of this pump. And this is all the shit you get with the Extreme. That's why I'm saying Gigabyte is just like cutting corners wherever it can. And yeah, that's the entire thing. I mean, Granted, it's on AIO, but I mean, come on, man. I mean, look at the heat sink for these, you know, that's a huge heat sink, I get it, but it's touching the VRAM and the, you know, die. But even like with the Tough series, we used to have a dedicated VRAM section, but come on, that's it? So extreme, right? So I'm gonna put this back together, um, change the pads in the meantime, but just to tear it down to show you what you're getting here, and uh, we'll look at the temperatures and noise. At the end of this chart, I have a fast forward clip of each card running for the 12 minute run. But this chart just gives you a quick look. As you can tell, the VRAM actually runs cooler on the Strix air cooler. But temperature wise, they're very similar. And noise wise, under full load with auto fan, they're pretty much the same. Uh, the Strix obviously can be even quieter because the fans don't spin at a certain temperature. But if you look at the run overall, You'll notice that the Strix also maintains a higher boost clock the entire time. This is with no overclocking. Both of these cards are set to its maximum power envelope. So if you notice during the runs, I'm actually pulling about 550 watts. 
which is pretty high. Uh, no real gaming scenario should get you there uh, unless it's a very niche scenario. So let's keep that in mind as you look over the charts. And uh, thanks for watching.